Good evening, once again, welcome to So Into Bourbon. We are here on location once again, and I'm Glenn, this is Charlie, Hello. as usual. Charlie, what are we doing tonight? Tonight we are doing a variety of things, Glenn. As okay. you can see, we have two different bottles in front of you, and some of you may or may not be familiar. We're gonna talk about Luxco and Lux Row. We're gonna talk about Ezra Brooks and Rebel. And we're also going to talk about store picks and bourbon companies in general. We got a lot of fun information coming. Absolutely. Today. So before we get into that, let's just tell them exactly what we have here, Charlie. Here's exactly what we have. We have a bottle of Ezra Brooks Cask Strength Bourbon. This is a single barrel pick, affectionately known as Ezra Brooks and Dunn. See what they did there? That is quite the, quite the marketing genius. Uh, it is bottled as 120 proof, and this is the Rebel Bourbon, also bottled at 120 proof. It is also a single barrel store pick. So, Okay, so let's get into this. Now that they know what we're drinking tonight, for those who may be new to bourbon and new to whiskey and all this stuff, and they're like, well, what, what's a store pick? Great question, Glenn. What is a store pick? I'm so glad you asked that. A store pick is just that. It is a store or it could be a small mom and pop liquor store. It could be a Target or a Total Wine or a restaurant or an organization that goes and they buy a single barrel. So it is a single barrel selected for that bar, restaurant, liquor store organization. And they're affectionately known as a store pick. Why do I love store picks and why should you care and buy them? Because... When we're talking, especially in this bourbon market, in this bourbon economy, rare bourbons, it doesn't get any rarer than and a, a single pick. barrel and a store pick. It is a bottle that exists in a moment in time, and when they are all gone, they're gone. Because most barrels will, for, for normal store picks, you're going to get a yield of between 150 and 300 to 400 bottles. It doesn't get any more limited than that. Right. So, And we know that single barrels... Even though it's the same, same whiskey, yeah, that's in the barrel down the down the hall in the Rick House. Yep, they can vary widely between barrels in these store picks. Now, does the store just say, "Ah, give me barrel number six twenty seven, or do they actually go? Do and they pick actually them? go and they pick them. The answer is both. Sometimes they can just say, "Just send me something. I want to put my label on it, and let's go." Other times, they may take their employees or the ownership and they may go and actually taste a variety of barrels sometimes and especially during covid these distillers will send them tasting kits and they'll get little tasting bottles and they get to pick which one they like best so yeah so that's something else that you can do if you get to know a certain store that you frequent and you know that you like their you usually like their barrel picks yeah and you know that they actually go and they they taste the the bourbon before they pick it then you've got a pretty good idea that any of their store picks are going to be good and they and match I, your favorite play, and i will go one profile. step beyond that of saying when i go into a liquor store whether i've been there before know them or, or have never been in the town or, or will ever be there again don't go up to the counter and this is a psa don't ask for blanton's don't ask for Wellers or Pappies. Don't what you ask got behind the counter. What do you have behind the counter? Ask if they have any single barrel store picks or store selections. Because there's about 18,000 bottles of Pappy Van Winkle that will be released in 2023. 18,000 bottles. There's maybe only 300 of these, of both of these. So which is more rare? Now, I'm not comparing Pappy Van Winkle to Old Ezra and Rebel. But I'm saying if you want something that's rare and hard to find and one of the kind and that you're going to enjoy, it doesn't get any better than this stuff. Absolutely. So both of these bottles retail for under 50 bucks. You can't beat that. You can't beat that. For a, for a single barrel store pick, under 50 bucks, that's, you that's can't beat pretty, so, pretty daggone good, especially so let's, in, this, in this environment. Absolutely. So let's get into what these are. These are both from Lux Row or Lux Co., um, beautiful distillery in Bardstown, Kentucky. And some of you may be looking at this and saying, who is Ezra Brooks? And I will tell you, he's made up. When Lux Co. was owned by the, I believe it was the Hoffman Distillery, they just made it up in the 50s. They, they thought it sounded good, they threw it on there. 
And if you know anything about Ezra or old Ezra, you know it used to have a seven on it. The reason it had a seven on it is because they were trying to kind of rip off Jack Daniels, which Brown Foreman actually sued them over. So why do I bring all that up? Everybody wants to think that the distillery that they go to and the brands that they love and the brands that they follow have this rich history dating back to generations and the founding of our country. And that's really not the case. Some do. Some do. A lot don't. And they change hands many times. When times are good, they're putting out great product. When times are bad, they're maybe not. So doing your research and understanding, number one, where's this bourbon coming from? Who owns it? Where are they getting it? Lux Row has not been around very long. So if they're offering six and seven year single barrel selections, that's not coming out of Lux Row. Charlie, where is this bourbon coming from? Great question. So if you look on a lot of bottles, and this one is no exception, this one says distilled and aged in Kentucky, bottled for Lux Row. What that tells me, an idiot, is that they didn't (laughs) distill this. They're sourcing this. But right. me, an idiot, can use the internet, and I know that they were getting this from Heaven Hill, which makes me happy. Yes. So we're going to open this one. Yeah, let's open it. We're going to start here. So this Ezra Brooks is a... Would you like me to open while you... No, I tell. can do both. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know what? You open a bottle once in a while. Make it pop. let me open a bottle. Uh, this Ezra Brooks is a 78% corn rye mash... Or corn mash bill. 10% rye, 12% malted barley. It's barreled at barrel proof at 100 120 proof. Um, It is in all likelihood sourced by Heaven Hill. So this is coming from down the road in Bardstown and being bottled for them. Beautiful. Oh, thank you, Glenn. That's a gave you kind of a heavy pour there, didn't I? I did. You're just gonna have to drink it. I am just gonna have to drink it. Uh, This bottle is also. I'm not for sure. Oh, you almost dropped the cork. Not totally sure on the age, but it does have, and this is another reason why I love single barrel picks, it's at least five years old. Um, So this was barrel filled in 2016 in all likelihood. So it's probably a little older than six years old if I had to guess. So, yeah. So uh, let's get into this. Nice deep amber color. Yes, it is. Not, Not super, super dark, but it's got a... Pretty, yeah. Not much clean to the pretty. glass. Pretty. No, not at all. There's yeah, no clean. Not much. Hmm. You go. Okay. There's not much of a nose on it. Yeah, but I don't get a, a ton of ethanol or alcohol on it for no. 120 proof either. This has, uh, the first thing I'm picking up on this is kind of that, and we've talked about this before, at least, and people may think I'm nuts, but that cola smell. Yeah. Almost like you're, mm-hmm. like you just poured a- Sweet a, carbonation, a, sort yes, of. A, a, a glass yeah. of Coke. Very Pepsi. sweet. Yeah. Very sweet on the nose and not much else. Interesting. Yeah, I don't, I'm not picking up a whole lot of corn or- 78% or, corn yeah. and I get no corn. So I'm really- That's odd. Uh, uh, cheers, cheers, sir. Let's- have a taste. Hmm. Hmm. Are you getting are you getting a lot of burn? A little bit. I'm getting a little burn on little the back burn. of the yep. on the back part of the roof of my mouth. Yep. But it splashy flavor yeah that i get it it when i first put it in my mouth i was like oh my gosh and there's this huge splash of sweetness and it goes quick and then there's a little bit of um i don't want to say bitterness but like a bitter chocolate or a, a licorice almost and then the flavor just kind of stops and you're left with just that kind of burn it dissipates very quickly. really quickly and I'm going to say this and you're going to kill me for it. And I'm going to kill myself for it later because whenever I hear people describe a bourbon as leathery, <laughs> they say they get a, a leather note. And I'm, I always ask myself, when have you ever taken a bite of leather? And I get it. 
I totally, when you said it. Yeah. Totally. But that's that's exactly what I'm, that's what yeah. I'm picking up on this. Like it, it almost like sounds, a, I hate it. I hate that I'm saying this, but that's what I'm getting. The second drink almost dry, like a, like not tannic, like fruit tannic, but it, it's very dry. Now, it's not bad. Mm -mm. It's a totally drinkable bottle for 120 proof. And the nice thing that I like about barrel proofs is with a little oxygen and this being open for a while, I think it'll open up. Yeah. And I think the, a drop of water or two would open this up as well. I think it would too. On I'm the second sip, I'm getting a little bit more, like you said, the bitter yep. chocolate, the semi-sweet chocolate on it. It's, and we always say this, love it or hate it, we like to be challenged. Mm -hmm. We like something interesting. And this this is not a dull uh, tasting bourbon. Yeah. I thought it was going to be, honestly, when I smelled it yeah. on the nose, I was like, mm, there's not much going on here. But it's, it's, it's interesting. It is. It is interesting. And I think it will open up. Like I said, I think it will open up after a while. It is not overly complex after two or three drinks. No. You know, the... the I feel like the proof is is maybe hurting it a little bit because I don't want to say my tongue is numb, but what is the proof? 120. Again? Okay, which so it, that, it's a that, it's a mellow drinker at 120. It is, and honestly, it, I you probably said it, but I didn't. I wasn't listening. I guess, but that happens a lot. I didn't realize it was 120 proof, so yeah. that explains the the burn. Um, but that burn is definitely dissipated. Also on the second and third sips. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is, it's. It does have a very kind of smoky, oaky, mm -hmm. um, that it, it's not a sweet, it, it's not very sweet. It's not, although I will say, and before you even started that sentence, I was going to say on my, on my third sip, I was picking up more of a, almost, uh, not a sp a fruitiness to yeah. it, but not a really sweet fruit. Yeah. Hmm. The nose. Like you said, it, it's a challenge. That's a much more com complex isn't the word, but it's making me kind of challenges your palate a little bit. And I think it's because of that proof. I really yeah. do. I think the proof may be a little high to where you're losing. It almost feels like it wants to it's over proof. Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe it, maybe that's what it is. So I'm wondering if a drop or two of water wouldn't open that up. I think it would, and you know me when I'm drinking casually mm -hmm. at home or in a social setting. Usually, I'm drinking it on the rocks or on a rock. So I'd be interested to see yeah how that changes um, on a rock. Well, all right, really quickly, drink it or sink it. Oh. Drink it or sink it. I don't know yet, Charlie. I agree. I'm, I'm gonna have to revisit it. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's a really good value for the money or if I really don't care for yeah. that and it will just be a mixer on my bar. I really don't know. Yeah, I'm not. But I'm, that makes me sure excited yet. because now I have to revisit it. So yeah. I'm gonna take a drink of water because we're gonna open another bottle from the same distillery. I'll drink of water too. Lux Row, Lux Co. Mm. What notes are you getting on the water? Um, notes of water? Leather. Leather, rich leathery. Leather so, and lace. I'm picking up lace on that's, the water. That's weird. <laughs> we'll edit that out. <laughs> so the other bottle that you have in front of you is Rebel. And some of you may say, Rebel, that's weird. Rebel used to be Rebel Yell, and then they dropped the yell, and now it's just called Rebel Bourbon. Rebel Yell has been around for a long time, and I mean a long time. It was originally part of the Weller brand. It uses the same weeded mash bill, which is 68% corn, 20% wheat, and 12% malted barley. And it's been around since the early 1900s. Um, obviously, it was sold in the South, the whole rebel right. yell type thing. Uh, but I'm yeah. anxious for this one because A, I have never tried it before. I've never had any rebel or rebel yell. Um, I did not know that it was not Rebel Yell anymore. It's just Rebel. Um, this also says distilled and aged in Kentucky, bottled for Luxro. So in all likelihood, this is Heaven Hill. Could bottle. be the exact same. <laughs> well, no, different mash bill. Oh, true. This is a 20% wheat, a 12% malted barley. Which is the next reason why I'm... 
You need to let me handle the openings from now on, Charlie. Yeah, last time you um, spilled. <laughs> started to say that's the next reason I'm excited for this because Charlie is not a weeder type of guy. Typically, I am not a weeder type of guy. Uh, my palate does not dis does not agree with weeded whiskeys and bourbons. Um, I get like a weird funk kind of flavor mm -hmm. and I just typically don't like it. But there are exceptions to that rule and we will see if this is yeah. one now. Um, it's a lot darker color. It is, that's A lot darker color. And this beautiful. is also um, single barrel selection. This was barrel filled on 228, 2017. So again, probably five or six years old. And it is also 120 proof. This. This one is clinging to the glass a little bit more than the uh, yeah, than the other Yeah, it kind of is. Puts a nice ring around the top yeah. and a little, little drip down. Mmm, fruity. Yeah, smells like a weeder. Again, <laughs> I am 120 proof, no ethanol. Right. Like none. Like you can stick your nose in there, doesn't make your eyes water, you don't get any of that ethanol, which yeah. is really surprising. I like. <sighs> Whoa, what was that? Yeah, I got it too. This is really going to sound weird. I got a mustard. That's note. weird. I didn't get mustard. That's, that nose does change as you go back odd. to it. It's not, I hate to say that, but it, like it's a honey not mustard? unpleasant. No, I don't, I, I don't know. Maybe hmm. there's something going on with me tonight, but Jeez. the, it does have a bit of the funk yeah. that you talked about, but not, not a lot, not not overpowering. Boy, it really clings to the glass. Mm -hmm. I, I'm I'm anxious. Cheers. Yeah, Here we go. I'm ready Here for we this go. One. I want you go first because you're the guy who is not a big fan of weeders. I want to hear what you have to say about this. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I get a, there's something about weeders that it, there's just a, there's something on with my palate that is like a bitterness and kind of a, it's a, like a bitter grain. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say spoiled, but it's just, it kind of lingers there longer than I want it yeah. to. You go. You probably love this. <laughs> I'm not gonna say I love it. My my first impression is there's no way this 120 proof. I would agree. It with does you. not drink like 100. I would absolutely. Proof. Agree it's with you. really really mellow, palatable. Yeah, yeah. mellow, mellow. And I don't I don't want to use the smooth, smooth word because I don't want to get chastised. But it it really is. I'm gonna have another sip because yeah. I need to. And for me, I've drank enough that I know kind of what I like and what I don't like and what I'm gonna like and what I don't like. I think this is another one that may be a little overproofed. You think? I, I really do, I really do. Because one of the things, I love barrel proof bourbon, I really do. But I love good barrel proof right. bourbon. And some bourbon is improved by barrel proof and being proofy and getting all those big bold flavors and some bourbons aren't because the flavors are nuanced and as your palate grows you start to understand that there are 80 proof bourbons not so much anymore but there have been that are really good and 90 proof and 100 proof and you pick up things that you don't get because they're overwhelmed by yeah. the other stuff so this may be something that would again be helped by an ice cube or a couple drops of water but i would agree i would agree with that it's I, not terrible. I like this. I, I do. It's I, I'm not. It's not super complex, mm -hmm. so I can't throw out a bunch of flavor notes at you. I'm. Once again, it's got a little bit of that funk, but not a lot. Yeah. It's um, a little. It it's got a little spice to it. It's got some I spice. Mean, it's funny. On the second sip, I picked up yeah. more of the spice, which is odd because usually. Yeah, I pick that up on the first sip, and then that dissipates. But. Yeah, but it is. I mean, twelve percent malted barley. I mean, that's a little. I mean, you should get a little spiciness to it. Um, yeah, it, it's and it's it's got a little bit of sweetness, but it's not super sweet like some wheat 
wheat, wheated bourbons can be. I don't get a lot of sweetness at all. I'm not there. Just a little bit. That's what I'm saying. Just a little bit. Yeah. That you would expect more sweetness from a weeded bourbon. Um, I'm not. You know what? I, I don't I, pick you, up a whole lot of corn. I don't pick up a whole lot of you caramel know, or You chocolate. know what I take away from this? What? Single barrel picks are the best thing in the world. <laughs> they are. And that's the point. I've been so excited. So I picked this one up last week. Um, at a at a store on in rural southern Indiana, I picked this one up this week at a different store in southern Indiana, and I was like, "Oh, they're the same. They're owned by the same company. This is going to be great. They're different mash bills." But the point is, they're single barrels, and they're unique. They are, and this flavor exists, and then it's gone forever. How can you not be romantic about bourbon with something that is so just fleeting? <laughs> I'm just gonna you, let you go. Go. I, I don't want to preach to you, but <laughs> like lining up and waiting for like a Weller or a Blantons, and I know Blantons are single barrels, but it, it just doesn't feel like it's the same. So finding those single barrel picks, those one once in a lifetime, because that's what it is. It's so much fun. This is what having said all of that. Drink it or sink it, Charlie. <laughs> Drink it or sink it. That was loud. That probably was loud, and I apologize. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't hate either of them. I don't. But this I is, don't know if this I, is our most wishy-washy episode it is wishy -washy, ever. <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. So what I will say is, would I seek either one of these out to buy again? No, I wouldn't. What if they were single barrel selections? There's too many others. Too many other okay. options in it. That, Saying that, I'm not trashing either one. I'm, yeah. I have nothing negative to say about either one of these. But neither one makes me want to drink it again. Now, if these were my bottles, they're open now, they're on the counter, yes, I'm going to drink them. They're mine. And I'm bottles. probably they're going mine. to enjoy them. They're mine. And who knows? Once again, drop an ice cube in it, and I may love it. I don't know. We'll have to find to, out. To your point, I was going to say, before you said it for me, that I am going to enjoy these on my bar and letting them open up and mm -hmm. trying them and experimenting with them. And the fact that they were both sub $50 bottles makes me feel no sort of way about it. I'm going to enjoy them on his bar as well. Such is the way. So <laughs> um, to, to bring all of that back, and I know we covered a lot of territory. We did. Um, it's tough out there in the bourbon market. It really is. It's tough to find great values and, and it's hard to know what's what and who's who and where bourbon is coming from. And the only thing that I could tell you viewers is continue to educate yourself, ask questions, and don't be afraid to buy the 40 or $50 single barrel pick because if it sucks, it's a great story. Absolutely. Right? All right, Charlie, I'm going to pin you down. Since we were wishy-washy, both of us were on Drink It or Sink It. If you had to pick one of these bottles. The Ezra. <laughs> See how quick that was? Yeah, the Ezra. That was the, quick. The Ezra is, is, to me, more complex, which is not to say it is complex, but the Ezra, to me, is just a little better, which is surprising for me because normally I don't like a high corn mash bill, and 78% corn is pretty freaking high. If I had to pick one just on... This tasting tonight, with no further knowledge, I would probably pick the Rebel, just because I feel like it was a little more interesting. And this is why bourbon is great. And this is the stuff that you can do with your friends and your family, is if you find a single barrel selection, grab it and try it. And you can buy a regular bottle of Ezra Brooks and compare it to that, or a regular bottle of Rebel and compare it to that and see how different the flavor is. And let's just clarify, if you do grab it, make sure you pay for pay it. Pay for it first. Before you leave the yeah. store. Don't, don't, yeah, you gotta pay for it. So. Charlie, do we have anything more to say on these? I do. Really quickly, you need to like and subscribe. Huh. Okay, go ahead. Follow us on Instagram. <laughs> and follow us on Facebook as well. And TikTok. Whiskey Realtor. Whiskey on Realtor. TikTok. Yep, where and I post very embarrassing videos of Charlie. 
once or twice. And obviously we are not in my basement. We are on tour and we will continue to be on tour in 2023. So if you've got an awesome bar and live in the Louisville metro area, give us a call. We'd love to film at your place. But you got to share some whiskey with us. You have to share a little bit of whiskey. We'll bring bottles, but you got to share some. All but right. As always, keep your underwear tight. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> Just chime in and say something dumb every now and again. <laughs> Did you get any on you?